Founded on the 1st of February 1943, the Central Bank of Ireland was tasked with initially limited powers and functions. The most important was to safeguard the integrity of the currency. Based in Foster Place, the then financial district of Dublin, the Central Bank guided Ireland through the difficult post-World War II years. However, as the economy improved and strengthened, so the institution grew in importance. The first governor of the Central Bank was Dr Joseph Brennan, who was born in Bandon, County Cork in 1887. A key advisor to Tisha Cayman de Valera during what was known as the Economic War with the United Kingdom, Brennan was the Irish Free State's first controller and auditor general, who was later appointed as chairman to the Currency Commission, the central bank's institutional predecessor. Noting the high expectations upon the new institution and its people, Minister for Finance Sean T. O'Kelly noted at the time, some people imagine that central banks, if their powers are wide enough and if they are used, can almost create a new heaven and new earth. I do not know that that has been tried anywhere. The fledgling years of the central bank were marked by challenges to its independence. As the institution sought to establish itself, it came under pressure from many quarters, not least from media and political classes. In March 1953, Governor Brennan resigned on the basis of what he described as the government's continued disregard in respecting consultation with the central bank on matters of monetary and credit policy. For Brennan, it was a matter of principle that the institution he played such a central part in forming was consulted on issues of economic importance. His resignation was to mark a line in the sand with regard to the central bank's independence. In subsequent years, the institution firmly established itself, taking on responsibility for exchange controls and the management of the sovereign debt market. The final year of the 1960s was marked by the appointment of T.K. Whitaker as the new governor. Whitaker was credited with designing a policy in the 1950s that brought an end to isolationism and opened Ireland's economy to international investment. On his death in 2017, at the age of 100, Whitaker was described as the most influential public servant in the history of the state. In 1967, the Central Bank of Ireland announced a proposal for a new headquarters on Dame Street in the heart of Dublin. Designed by architect Sam Stevenson, it would be over 11 years before the Central Bank moved into its new home. In a style of architecture that was described as brutalist, the building opened to mixed reviews. In time, however, its distinctive design became an iconic landmark of the Dublin cityscape. In the early 1970s, the Central Bank acquired a site at Sandyford County, Dublin, for development of a new currency centre to print notes and mint coins. It was the first of its kind since the foundation of the state in 1922. Officially opened by President Patrick Hillary, the mint began the printing of notes in 1974 and the minting of coins in 1976. Up until this point, Irish notes and coins had been printed and minted in the United Kingdom. On Decimal Day, the 15th of February 1971, Ireland followed the United Kingdom in introducing a decimal currency system. The central bank managed the issue of the new currency. The view that decimalisation caused inflation became embedded in folk history, and many believed that history would be repeated a generation later with the introduction of the euro. I want to know what's going to happen to me if I get five new pins to gallon from my mint. 1971 was also the year when new legislation came into effect, expanding the central bank's functions. Its monetary policy powers were enhanced, it was given responsibility for the Exchequer's account and for the licensing and supervision of banks. In January 1973, Ireland became a member of the European Economic Community, now the European Union with the public voting in favour of joining by a majority of 83%. Whilst there was an overwhelming yes to Europe, some expressed concerns. Any tables we've seen of prices, I've been in most of the, of the capitals of Europe, they are not true. But I think we'll do very well. But of course, the whole thing will depend on whether there is uh, too much centralisation or not, you know. Uh, I wouldn't like to see too many things controlled from Brussels. Ireland's membership saw the central bank entering the European sphere for the first time, taking its place on a range of European central banking committees. In 1979, the European monetary system came into operation and Ireland became a full member of the exchange rate mechanism. 
This ended over 150 years of parity between the Irish pound and sterling. In the 1980s, Ireland was to experience a serious recession and in 1988, the central bank drew attention to what it termed the extraordinary accumulation of national debt over the previous 10 years. In 1989, a new Central Bank Act strengthened the organization's banking licensing and supervision powers. This expansion in the central bank's powers came at the same time as the creation of the International Financial Services Centre, which would go on to become a major hub for international finance. In 1993, as the bank marked its 50th anniversary, the Irish pound was devalued by 10%, following the withdrawal of the British pound sterling and the Italian lira from the exchange rate mechanism. Following a period of painful consolidation in the late 1980s and early 1990s, which restored the public finances to sustainability, strong export-led growth, combined with significant foreign direct investment, transformed the economy towards the second half of the 1990s. The dramatic turnaround saw the Irish economy become known as the Celtic Tiger and led to near full employment and greatly improved living standards. While the country enjoyed a sense of improved financial stability, it would be drastically reversed by the subsequent credit fueled property bubble in the mid-2000s. During the final years of the 20th century, Ireland, along with 10 other members of the EU, decided to adopt the euro as their currency, with euro notes and coins reaching our pockets in January 2002. This resulted in the transfer of the central bank's monetary policy powers to the newly established European Central Bank, with the governor of the Irish Central Bank now joining his European counterparts in setting euro area interest rates. The early 2000s saw the establishment of the financial regulator, this was a separate but constituent part of the newly formed Central Bank and Financial Services Authority of Ireland, with responsibility for the regulation of all financial institutions and powers for the supervision of insurance companies, investment firms and credit unions. This mandate widened again in 2006 with the introduction of the Consumer Protection Code, outlining a set of rules and principles to protect consumers of financial services. This was a time when the Irish economy was booming. However, this was not to last. In September 2008, the global banking firm Lehman Brothers collapsed, plunging the world into a financial crisis. This subsequently exposed huge weaknesses in the capital levels and loan books of Irish banks. In an effort to safeguard the stability of the financial system, the Irish government passed emergency legislation which guaranteed six Irish-owned institutions, leading to the recapitalization or nationalization of the major banks. This global financial crisis exposed the fragility of the Irish economy, setting off a catastrophic national downturn. Unemployment surged, the housing market collapsed, and public debt skyrocketed. The crisis prompted many inquiries which led to significant change and reform. This included a radical overhaul of financial regulation, with new legislation in 2010 creating a single unitary body, the Central Bank of Ireland with responsibility for both central banking and regulation, as well as enhanced powers of enforcement. In 2009, Patrick Honahan was appointed Governor of the Central Bank. An academic and former IMF and World Bank economist, Honahan's appointment marked a significant change, being the first Governor not to come from a civil service background. The Honahan report, released that same year, became the definitive report on the crisis. The report cited government policy and the reliance of Irish banks on cheap external borrowings as factors which helped fuel the bubble. It also pointed out that the banks themselves had failed consumers and was not sparing of the central bank, which it said had displayed an unduly deferential approach to the banking industry. Despite early action to contain the crisis, it was clear by the second half of 2010 that Ireland would need financial support from its EU and international partners. Governor Honahan drew national attention to this in an unprecedented radio interview in November 2010. The Financial Times this morning is reporting that there's growing concern about bank deposits here. There's a palpable sense, I think, amongst people that they're not being given the full picture. So what are the IMF and the ECB here for today? What will they be doing? The 
intention is and the expectation is on their part and personally on my part that the negotiations or, or discussions will be effective and that a loan will be made available and drawn down as necessary. What resulted was a three-year EU ECB IMF assistance programme, also known as the bailout. November 2014 marked a significant change to banking supervision. The European Central Bank assumed responsibility for supervision of euro area banks with the introduction of the single supervisory mechanism, the SSM. Its creation was intended to ensure confidence in the quality and impartiality of banking supervision. Under the SSM, Irish banks are supervised by teams consisting of staff from both the ECB and the Central Bank of Ireland. 2015 saw Professor Philip R. Lane, another internationally respected academic, appointed as the 11th Governor of the Central Bank of Ireland. Lane's tenure has seen a reinforcement of the mortgage measures started under Honehan and marked a new era of transparency and public outreach in the history of the institution. In 2017, the Central Bank moved into its new headquarters designed by Henry J. Lyons on Dublin's North Wall Quay. The move marked a new era for both the Central Bank and the financial outlook for the country. It's been an eventful 75 years with both highs and lows. From becoming the government's banker to producing Ireland's currency. From decimalisation to the euro changeover and navigating the financial crisis. The Central Bank of Ireland has continuously evolved as it adapts to an ever-changing economic and regulatory landscape. As we look to the future, we will continue in our public service mission of safeguarding stability and protecting consumers.